August of 2022, Matt Chandler was confronted by a woman in his church lobby who knew that he was interacting on social media with one of her friends in which she deemed was inappropriate. Matt Chandler brought this information to his church elders, showed them the DMs, and they deemed a course of action. A course of action that would remove him from the pulpit for both, quote, disciplinary and developmental restoration. Three months later, right around the holidays, Matt Chandler is back in the pulpit. So on this video, we'll be looking at a few clips from his first Sunday back in the pulpit, digging a little bit deeper on a revelation he made, and ultimately addressing the question of, is this good for the evangelical industrial complex, or is this business as usual? Bruce Lawn. We've covered this extensively on the channel from every possible angle, including some revelation about what was in those alleged DMs. And I think that today's video is going to bring some needed light and context to what is transpiring. But if I think back at it, here was my impression with the way this folded out. Matt Chandler DMs inappropriate coarse gesturing not above reproach, which I believe pastors and elders should be above reproach. I believe all Christians should try to live their lives above reproach, but especially elders. What happened was, from one standpoint, you had people saying, there's no way this is all that happened. There's no way this is all that happened. There has to be something more to the story. And maybe there is, okay? Maybe it's a big cover-up. Maybe they're lying about it. I don't know. Then the flip side of it was, well, even if this is all that happened, it's misogynistic and the Billy Graham rule is terrible and this is patriarchy run amok in the church. Basically positioning this entire conversation and this ordeal, and this was going viral on Twitter when this came out, probably from a lot of ex-evangelical folks with maybe church hurt and yada, yada, yada. But the way this was positioned is that this is a lose-lose, okay? If this is the story, there's no way the story can be true. There has to be something more to the story. But... If this is the true story, well, then it's still wrong and the church is still messed up and Matt Chandler is still a bad guy. Whenever there's a lose-lose situation and that's the narrative, I would be very weary about stuff like this, okay? Just as you're watching and the narratives that are coming out. Now, before we get into this, guys, please smash that like button for the algorithm, all that good stuff. Let's jump right into the conversation. This is directly from their YouTube page. This is one of the elders kind of giving an update. We're going to react to some of this. We're going to react to what Matt said, and then we're going to uh, we're going to tap into a very specific revelation he made that I honestly forgot about, but it's uh, it maybe relevant. And over the last several months, Matt has been working diligently through a development plan that was laid out for him by the elders. As a team, as an elder board, we created this plan in consultation with others, namely Summer Vincent Berger, who's our senior director of care, who has an expertise in developing plans just like this. And we prayerfully considered both the discipline and the development necessary. Very specific with the language used, both discipline and developmental. Okay, now there's going to be a revelation Matt makes here that's going to be very interesting in a second. So that is the approach that they've used. That's the language they've used. They've been very consistent on this. So shout out to Village Church for at least being consistent in their language. And we said with that plan, and this is what we told you on August 28th and then updated you throughout our time, that the plan itself would help us understand when the timing was right. And uh, the timing is right. Uh, we, so did, we find ourselves here. This they didn't give a timeline. They didn't, they didn't say by this point, but Matt was definitely very upfront that he was going to be back in the pulpit. He was going to continue pastoring them. This just so happens to land on, I believe, their 20-year anniversary. Okay, so he's saying the time was right. They didn't give a timeline, but 90 days, it sounds like what it took. And so let's, let's hear from Matt, who got a standing ovation when he came on this stage. Now, some people are triggered that he got a standing ovation because, again, they're assuming the worst without knowing any of the details. And other people are saying, well, how can any of the church stand uh, to clap? Because they also don't know any of the details. Not a fair, uh, not, not an unfair conclusion here. All right. What a weird morning. Of course, I'm sick as a dog, so it's fine. A couple of things. Um, I know. Um, 
that the, that the Christian life's a bit of a marathon. Um, sometimes you're running uphill and sometimes you're running downhill. Sometimes it's snowing and sometimes it's sunny. Um, and if my foolishness um, thank you, created any additional weight or hardship for you, um, then please forgive me. Um, I said back on the 28th that um, I was real disoriented um, when this happened because I didn't understand how it happened. I mean, I'm a, I'm a man who guards his life and doctrine fairly closely, and so I was disoriented by the fact that, um, meant one, that the accusation came, and then um, I was confused by even some of the things that progressed after that, and um, I, I do think um, that it revealed some unhealth in me that was a, a blind spot that, that I just couldn't see. Hmm. And, um, and so I'm, I, I couldn't be m more grateful um, so I think the question a lot of people are having here, is this him taking responsibility? He's still not going all the way at the point of saying it was sinful, but at least I haven't heard that yet. Um, he's saying unhealth, he's saying blindsided, so on and so forth. He did not have an affair, there was nothing sexual. Some could argue there was nothing emotional, but it apparently, in the way he was texting with a young lady, or not texting, excuse me, DMing with a young lady in his church that some people would say there was some lines crossed. Okay, so let's, let's, let's keep watching this that the elders are, look, there are three things um, to the man. Um, they love the word of God ferociously. They love Jesus Christ deeply, and they love me and my family. Um, and we have felt that through this whole ordeal. Um, and so there's, there's... So, I mean, again, shout out that they even had elders, because a lot of churches don't have elders, right? Um, a lot of churches don't even have any type of accountability or systems in place to sit someone down if something not necessarily sinful but inappropriate happens, okay? So that's a that's a interesting point that he's making. Hey, we have a team who I came to, according to him, he came to after he was confronted by the friend of the lady who saw these DMs and came to and they basically were more or less, hey, you know, this isn't wise, of course, gesturing, I'm assuming a little bit of I don't know, talk about alcohol. That's supposedly what was in those DMs. DMs, not text messages. He didn't give out his phone number. This is this is what the story has been very consistently all along. No, oh, I mean, I hear the whispers. That there's no beef between us and the elders. I don't know what you think about their play. I agree with it. I'm grateful that they love this church. They love Jesus. They love the one. They love us enough. That they're driven by conviction enough um, to, to model what, what needed to be modeled here. And Shout out to Oxen Brand, W Take. I'd rather someone react this way to a blind spot than to walk off the cliff with their blinds securely on. This is the way we should react to blind spots. If this is just a blind spot. From all measuring accounts, it seems like this is a blind spot. So um, if, if I cause any burden, I'm so sorry. And, and then I want to thank the elders, and I want to thank Summer and Exec, and I want to thank uh, the staff that had to carry a, a significant load um, be, because of the work I was doing. The elders asked me to do um, two intensives, and, um, and then a neurological exam, and then, uh, which if you don't know my backstory, we, we probably needed to do that, right? I, I don't have a right frontal lobe, um, if you remember that back in 09. Um, if you're a guest, I had brain cancer, and I had to do some surgery and some... And man, I so, okay, so I remember when this happened in real time. This was wild. Matt Chandler had brain surgery, he had brain cancer, and he's saying he does not have a right frontal lobe. I think... So check this out. The left frontal lobe is involved in controlling language-related movement, whereas the right frontal lobe plays a role in nonverbal abilities. Some researchers empathize uh, em emphasize that this rule is not absolute and that with many people, both lobes are involved in nearly all behavior, okay? So the right frontal lobe is seemingly dealing with stuff regarding the nonverbal abilities, okay? M and he's saying, hey, I don't have a right frontal lobe. I went through chemo, had brain surgery, all this stuff, and maybe it was a legit blind spot. Maybe some things transpired in the way he was communicating that were not all the way uh, appropriate, okay? So, 
brain damage, brain injuries, anything related to the brain could definitely have a huge effect on how people carry themselves, uh, especially if you guys have been keeping up with what's going on with CTE and the NFL and all that kind of stuff, right? So that's an interesting point that he makes and that he got his brain examined. I, I, I think that's a fair statement to make on his part. Like, hey, yeah, I don't have a right front boat. It's probably wise for me to go get checked out on this. That, that process has given me insight into exactly what happened. Um, so that I don't have to be anxious about that or nervous about that. And I think in time, uh, I'll share more. I don't have like six key learnings for you this morning. I just feel like fresh out of surgery. So um, I feel tender and um, alive to the Lord and grateful to be back with you. And uh, again, I, I think for, for all the talking points that may or may not need to happen this morning, I think my heart is, I'm sorry. There it is. I'm sorry. I mean, he's apologizing, he's owning it. Before I give you guys my thoughts, I got to make sure you guys don't miss what we have coming for you guys December 16th. Check, check this out, and then we're going to come back and share some of more, my more thoughts in terms of the macro issue here. You may not know I make music, but I got a new song coming out. And it's something I need you to do, but first, I want you to hear a snippet of the song. Uh, I went from being a porn addict to sharing the gospel with a porn actress who was criticized for being low status by the same OnlyFans who treat us so lavish. I'm confused. I swear y'all thought he did doing podcasts, hot takes. He still can rap! Now, in order to get this song to the top of Spotify, I need your help. I need you to click the link below or go to ruslantothemoon.com and pre-save this song. What is a pre-save? It means that this song will be added to your library to remind you to listen to it the day it comes out. And it also tells Spotify's algorithm that millions of people need to hear this song. So help me promote Christian music that contextualizes the gospel and will help change lives by going to ruslantothemoon.com or clicking the link below. Oh, 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 they got me with the dramatics. You know that a moment cannot be static too soon. Bruce Lawn. All right, let's jump right back into this. Okay, I, I failed you, and I know you love me, and I know you're so. And I, I appreciate so you've so been the grace of God to us tangibly. So thank you for that. But I'm. I appreciate that he's saying I failed you. I'm sorry. I think these are all very reasonable points to make when maybe not overtly crossing the line, but backing up and saying, "Hey, did I act like someone that lives my life above approach?" Sorry. Um, for any burdens I've caused or difficulties that my um, foolishness kind of brought about in your own journey with the Lord. And I'm so thankful um, for you and for these elders and for our staff. And um, it, like the Lord met us and he, and he carried us through. And I don't want to lose sight of that. I don't want to lose like, like chances of your stuff ever being made public and making salon um, is probably slim. And, and yet the Lord's going to be serious about your heart and to pursue the depths of who you are because he loves you. Um, and the more we can submit and bow to King Jesus, um, the more health, vibrancy, and wholeness is available to us. And so here in a second, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to turn it back over to Josh, but um, I, I did want to, I knew, I mean, I, I've known like today was going to be all eyes on me. And if you've been here for 20 years, you know how much I hate that. And so I'm eager for us. Um, you, you don't leave this behind. This now is a part of our story. Mm. Yep. Right? So I'm like, okay, let's give it. No, no, no. We're a whole new place now. Yep. I don't even know what that means yet, but we're going to find out together. So I'm eager for that. And so I'm sorry. Thank you. I do love you more than you know I do. So. All right. So what happens next is they come around him and they publicly restore him. They pray for him. These are the elders of the church. And uh, they, 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 they pray for him. And they, you know, are pu this is a public moment of restoration for Matt Chandler. Um, and uh, yeah, I, th I think this is an interesting time. OK, I think this is an interesting time because I think from one standpoint, maybe, hopefully, prayerfully, this is a moment in the evangelical industrial complex where something that was potentially not a as big of a deal as it, as it seemed got nipped in the bud. And that is a massive W for pastors, for people that are participating in these types of churches, mega churches, uh, personality driven churches. And though I think Matt has done a great job putting some safeguards. Um, maybe this is a turning of the leaf. Maybe this is a blueprint of how these things should be handled moving forward. That's a massive W, okay? The flip side is people are going to say, well, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Look, it's still misogyny, yada, yada, yada. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And listen, 
We can presume all we want. We can demand the details. You can do all that sort of things. But at the end of the day, uh, not everything that happens in these situations needs to all be publicly shared. There's other people involved. There's another person involved who, uh, quote unquote, blew the whistle that maybe if the text messages came out, it wouldn't be very flattering of her. There's another person involved who's also married that was DMing with Matt. That may not be the best look on her and her marriage. There's other people involved. So I, I'm not mad at the desire to maintain some degree of privacy and protection for these parties involved. But I think a lot of us also understand and see power, right? Big mega church, a lot of money, a lot of influence, and remain a bit skeptical. And if that's you, I'm not mad at you, right? But I would encourage you. Don't let skepticism turn into cynicism to the point where you can't maintain a posture of prayer that regardless on if you would attend a church like this, regardless on if you would go to a mega church, that you wouldn't have this cynical, critical spirit. Instead, I would encourage you to channel and pray, pray for Village Church, pray for Matt, pray for the families involved, and pray that it really is just this. That would be amazing. If it's really just this, praise God. This is a massive W in terms of how things should be handled moving forward and potentially a, a, a turning of how these things have been handled historically. Instead of covering up, they come out and they expose. And maybe in the future, there'll be more folks that do this, more pastors that do this, more pastors that are maybe not in the most healthiest place that if they're not careful, they could slide into a sinful place or taking account, taking uh, self-inventory, allowing their elders to create processes for them to restore. How about just establishing elders? How about Matt just having elders that could sit him down or just having elders that he could go to, right? So that's my that's that's my uh, my thoughts on this. I'm not discarding Matt. I'm not discarding all big mega churches or people who have massive personalities. And I get it. I, you know, it'd be difficult for me probably to attend a church this size um, in terms of the community aspect. But then, then again, I also know a lot of people that go to this church and say a lot of really good things about the community, the discipleship, the teaching of the word, the elders, right? And so on and so forth. So that will be my thoughts on this whole thing. Make sure you guys check out our original video on this thing over here and something that leaked about these alleged uh, DMs. We'll put that over here and we will see you over there. All right, peace.